Did you have a yeah. teacher or someone in the neighborhood or maybe someone at school that um, recognized maybe your struggle and like, you know, went out of their way to help you along your journey? Absolutely. So one of my teachers, she was my teacher from sixth to eighth grade. And she's like a mother to me, like her and I talk uh, literally like every single day. Um, her name is Aisha Blackshear. And I don't think had it not been for her and she was one of the first black teachers that I had. And so her approach was different. Like she would come through the neighborhood, drive through, you know, sit on the steps. Like she would really, you know, be, she was a part of our lives and still is to this day. And I'm 28. Mm. And shout out to her. We want to make sure we give her a shout out and shout out to all the teachers that go above and beyond. Um, Cause you guys are superheroes. It's interesting. Cause my partner, Corey, um, who still teaches to this day. And I'll be telling him like, you don't have to teach no more. He's like, I gotta be there for these kids, especially as a black man being in the school district. Um, and it's, it's, man, so it's a lot of ways why I want to go with this story based upon what you said. Um, but one of the things is, uh, some of the things you see in the inner city, specifically in Philadelphia, that's normal to us. You realize isn't normal, right? Um, as you, as you, you grow and get out of there, um, recently Corey and I did a talk for uh, a school in Philadelphia. Um, and what was crazy is we were talking to the students and we asked them, did anybody know anyone personally that died from gun violence? And we literally had every hand raised. Yeah. I've never seen nothing like every single student in the school. This is in North Philadelphia. I'm not going to mention the school or any um, kids, but every single student knew someone personally that died of gun violence, right? So when you talk about drug addiction, gun violence, things that plague our communities, um, this is what makes your story so powerful, right? So education was your way out. And you talked about, um, you know, the teacher that you had that helped you get through that. So um, leaving Mansion, your, your, I guess your dream was always to go to college. You got in the clock. That's a pretty, that's an amazing school. Like, so what was that journey? What was that journey like? Oh, going to, listen, one of my mentors, he um, was my mentor from high school, uh, Lieutenant Nordine. So he said to me, all of my kids go to HBCUs before they go anywhere. Because my whole thing was I was going to be a lawyer and I was going to Harvard. That that was it. I was going straight to Harvard. I wasn't doing nothing else. In my mind, I was like, I've been around black people all my life. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Harvard and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And he and he stopped me. And I, when I tell you, I'm so grateful for him um, and that experience alone. One, because had it not been for him and two other my two other mentors that I had, which was my high school principal and another um, officer who worked for the school district of Philadelphia, had it not been for them, I would. I, that's how I went on my first HBCU college tour. Mm -hmm. um, and they sent me on a college tour, stayed at the schools. It was amazing. But when I got to Clark, I, I didn't, I've never felt the way that I felt before. I felt like Atlanta is just the Mecca. It's mm -hmm. like, it's the place for black people. I felt felt like I was in a great space. I didn't feel like I was competing, you know, against anybody. Now there was definitely competition, but it was like, oh, like I'm here to do exactly whatever it is that I can do and help you at the same time. My professors pushed me. I joined my sorority. So I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Sigma chapter. I crossed 2014. That was an experience in itself. Um, and when I tell you, if I if I was late to a class, if I didn't show up to a class, I'm, when I tell you my professors were calling me or texting mm -hmm. me like, hey, what's going on? Where you at? And I didn't have that, you know, even what, what I went to school, I was 18. Mm -hmm. And so um, 28 now and my mom have 18 years clean, you know, thank God. Congratulations, but, Congratulations. Yes, shout out to her. Um, but at that moment, she still didn't, she still didn't know how to be a mom. And that's not anything that I faulted her for because of her upbringing. Right. And mm -hmm. so a lot of us only know what we experience and that's learned behavior. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, me leaving Philly, going to Atlanta, that was 12 hours away by car um, and not having nobody there. And the same exact thing happened. Literally how my teachers um, and mentors, teachers turned mentors took care of me when I was in middle school and high school. The same thing happened with my professors and I'm grateful. I'm so mm. grateful for them. Oh, you had a real village around you. It must be something about you. No, that everyone, you know, you, you're protected. That's amazing. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that HBCU experience is something else. So I went to Lincoln, right? So I understand, like, being on a campus of HBC, it's hard to explain to someone who's never been through it, right? Um, right. When you see people that look like you and they're there for, um, you know, a higher purpose. So that's that's dope um, from going to Clark. And you said you got your master's from Drexel. Yes. That's dope, too. Um, what's your master's in? Thank you. Educational leadership. 
Okay. And yeah, I got my masters from Drexel as well. Um, some okay. real yeah, yeah. So, you know, we got that connection. So it's in real estate, 